Hey everyone, Aisha here. So today I want to talk about don't let anyone steal your crown and that you are worthy. And so one of the things that I had struggled with um, for a while just as a single mom was confidence and uh, just worthiness and self-esteem. And so I remember one day I was actually at an event and I wore this beautiful dress. And so I hadn't dressed up in a really long time. And I was a little uncomfortable wearing this gorgeous dress. It was like this high-low dress, strappy, just really beautiful, right? And I looked great in it, but I was so uncomfortable because I hadn't dressed up in a while and I had all of these all of these thoughts in my head about who I am because I'm a single mom, what other people have said about me. And so I was super self-conscious and super uncomfortable in this dress. And so I remember as I was at this particular conference wearing this beautiful dress, so many people walked up to me and said, oh, this dress is gorgeous. And you know how people like, you know, they give you like really great compliments. But I struggled at this particular time to accept the compliments. And so I had to literally fight not accepting and fighting, you know, rejecting the compliment in some way, shape, or form. And I don't know if you've ever done this where somebody will give you a compliment and you're like, oh, this old thing, or I haven't worn this, or you really think this is nice. So, so that was where I was at at that time. And so people would say, oh this dress looks great on you and then I would literally have to stop myself from saying oh I got it for free or someone gave it to me oh are you sure right because I was just so used to not feeling good about myself between single mom stereotypes between what their dad said between people's betrayal like so many different things and just struggles with perfectionism like I really was very self-critical and it was very difficult for me to accept compliments and so I remember, I forget where I was or what I was at, but I just remember hearing a life changing message about when someone gives you a compliment, just say thank you. You don't have to justify it. You don't have to downplay it. You don't have to find some way to return it. You don't have to minimize it. You don't have to do anything, but thank you is just enough, right? And so when I found myself fighting to accept this compliment, fighting to rest in this compliment, fighting to try and find something that was wrong with me or what I was wearing so I didn't have to accept the compliment because not accepting the compliment would have reinforced what I already believed about myself and what I thought about myself was not good. And so it was hard for me, especially you know, dealing with years of feeling unworthy to be able to even allow myself even in a moment to feel any sort of worthiness. So I was looking for ways to reject it. I was looking for ways to feel inadequate. I was looking for ways to feel uh, to downplay my greatness just because I had been so hurt, so broken and my sense of self had been shattered. And so I ended up hearing in a, in a very interesting message that particular day at that conference. And so one of the things that I learned is there was actually a spoken word artist, right? And this spoken word artist said, told the ladies who were in that conference, she said to keep your heads up because when you tilt your head down, then your crown can fall. And it's so interesting because that imagery and that message, that particular point in time was what I needed to hear. I realized that because of patterns of betrayal, rejection, and just hurt, I had been tilting my head, my crown was falling, and I no longer believed who God called me to be and who God said that I was. And so... I re uh, there was also this moment when I was a kid, I was a teenager, and I remember getting my hair done. And um, the guy who did my hair, he he had the mirror in front of my hair so I can look at um, my hairstyle that, that day. And I, I could barely lift my head up. Like, I just was looking. I would kind of, like, look up a little bit. But I didn't lift my head up. And I remember that day. I don't even remember how old I was. But I just remember I was a teenager and what he said. But he had told me, he said, you're beautiful. Keep your head up. Stop looking down. Keep your head up. And so I want to say this to a single mom or really anybody or any mom who's listening to this right now. Keep your head up right? Keep your head up. 
I know sometimes when we go through life and when we go through experiences, when we go through hurt, when we go through pain, when we go through brokenness, it can cause us to to tilt our head down because we're viewing ourselves through the lens of what somebody else said about us and what's negative. And as single moms, we can view ourselves through the lens of what society says, what we might see on TV. I don't know how many TV shows I've seen where you see the single mom looking disheveled, broke, busted, disgusted, no man wants her. She's just out of it, barely scraping by, barely making ends meet, and everything is difficult, right? Or there's this antagonistic relationship where she's constantly being put down, constantly told, being told what she cannot do instead of what she can do. She's looking to people who can be there and they're not there. And this is the type of things that we see reinforced on TV. And so not only are we experiencing different things in our own life, because to be a single mom in general means that there was some sort of rejection at some point, whether through, I mean, unless it's like widow, you know, um, but there's usually some sort of rejection in there. There's a rejection um, because the dad decided not to be there. The husband left, the boyfriend left, and left the mom as a single mom. And even single moms by choice, there can be some some disappointment from what family looked like or what they expected families to look like. And even when I said maybe not widows because, you know, they they became a single mom through death. But I've heard stories of widows right who are rejected and not helped and ignored and, fa and forced to do this journey on their own so there's so many areas of rejection so many areas where people can tell you who who you can't be who you're not what what won't work for you right and sometimes and then the reinforcement in music in tv in media in in uh, in movies it can reinforce that the stigma that you're nobody and that's not true. And all of those different things, all of those acts of betrayals, all of those abandonment, all of those disappointments, all of those times that people said that they were going to be there and they didn't, all of those things that people would have said about you past and in the present, those things all begin to weigh you down and you begin to tilt your head down. You begin to look at the floor because you no longer believe that you are worthy. You no longer believe that you are matter. And those things, when you tilt your head down, it causes your crown to slip off your head. But if you hold your head up and walk in your authentic authority in Christ saying when you walk in the worthiness that you have because you're in Christ then your crown can stay on your head and so one of the things is is when you look at crowns they're a symbol of royalty kings and queens wear crowns and so we have to understand that because of who we are in Christ that we are royalty matter of fact uh first Peter 2 9 says but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people of his own possess a possession that you may proclaim the excellence of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and so because we are in Christ because we are children of the most high God we are a royal priesthood right we are a royal priesthood and as a royal priesthood that means that we have a crown a crown um in christ right and so we have to be able to recognize who we are right and it says for ephesians 2 10 and i love this scripture this is something i teach my kids all the time to be able to remember and be anchored in this for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we shall walk in him in them so we are god's workmanship right and we know that god doesn't create junk we know that the imagery that god uses when he talks about who we are and how he fashioned us is that we are the clay he is a potter and he has handcrafted us in him through good works right and so when we understand that when we understand our identity in Christ and we understand who we are that means that we can lift up our head and look straight forward and rest in the fact that we are worthy we are amazing we are fearfully and wonderfully made we are made in the image and likeness of God and nothing that anyone says can take that from us because our identity doesn't come from man it comes from God, but that can be a difficult thing to rest in, right? When you have the noise about who it is that you are not. 
And even when we look at creation, when we look at Genesis 2, 18, I'm going to, um, talking from the NLT, it says, God created Eve, right, for Adam. And Eve was created as a, as a helper who was just right for him. She was just right for Adam, which means that nothing, even, even when Eve sinned, even when Eve ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, that did not change that she was a helper who was just right for him. We all fall short. Um, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But thank God for Christ Jesus that he has redeemed us. And when we look at 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, a new has come. Which means no one can take our newness from us because our newness doesn't come from man. It comes from Christ. Right? So we have to be able to rest in our identity in Christ. And so during the times where, you know, you're tempted to forget who you are, the time, because I know I still deal with a lot of, you know, being self-critical, um, forgetting that I'm the prize, forgetting who I am, right? Right? Just in life, when I begin to look at myself and say, oh, are you really qualified? Are you sure you're good enough? And I begin to wonder, I really have to shift my thoughts back to the word of God and understand who I am because I still can walk with my head down in uncertainty and look for external validation when the only validation that I need is from Jesus. God made me in his image and likeness. He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. He called me fearfully and wonderfully made according to Psalm 91 verses 13 through 14. And the thing is, is that I love when you read on a little bit past Psalm um, verse 14. It goes on to say that God's work is wonderful, which means I am wonderful, which means you are wonderful. And my soul knows it very well. And this is a problem. Right. And I think that this this part is the key right here. This is my soul knows it very well. But unfortunately, because of brokenness, because of shame, because of hurt, because of betrayal, because of disappointment, because of what people have said and because of what you might see on the news, our soul doesn't know it very well. There's a disconnect between, between what the word of God says and what our soul knows. And so we have to be able to meditate on these scriptures. We have to be able to meditate. See, um, I think it's in Joshua 1. I forget what scripture it is. It said, but meditate on these words day and night. We have to be able to meditate on these things to be able to counteract the negativity, especially if you are still connected with toxic people who want to remind you of your past, remind you of who you are, remind you of what you can't do or what they think you can't do and place limitations on you. You have to be able to get it to the point where your identity is known in the depths of your soul, right? Because then that allows you to keep your crown on. That allows you to walk in the fact that you are a royal priesthood. That allows you to see yourself more the way God sees you. And I don't think it's, and this is my opinion, I don't think it's possible for us as humans to be able to see ourselves as God sees us because God is so unknowing. God is so wonderful. We can't even wrap our minds, our human minds around the depths of God's love for us. But we know that he does love us because we've seen it through his, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But even with that, I still don't think that we can fully comprehend how much God loves us and how he sees us, even though we see it you know, in the word of God, right? But we can begin to see ourselves more the way God sees us. We can begin to saturate ourselves with the word of God that allows these things and these truths to reach down into our soul so no one can break us. We learn to rest in the finished work of Christ. And we weren't learn to walk in our authority in Christ. Because when we understand the crown that and, and just the wonderful nature of how God has created us, we stop tilting our head down. We stop identifying with rejection. And we become more of who God has called us to be. We stop comparing ourselves to other people. 
and we begin to walk with our own authority and our and the authority given to us through Jesus Christ. And that allows us to show up more powerfully as women, right? With a purpose and a plan for our lives. And it allows us to show up more powerfully in motherhood for our children. Because what our, our children, what is this? What does the saying say? Our children, learn, more is learned by caught ver- than what is taught. Something like that. Something like that. Learn it's more learned than is taught than what is taught. I think I totally jacked up the phrase, but you get what I'm saying. Our kids learn more from what they see us doing. And if we're tilted down with our head tilted down, if we don't understand who are who we are, if we're allowing other people to define us, if we are walking around broken in shame and condemnation, um, not having self-esteem or, you know, any type of self-worth, what do we think our kids are picking up? If we're looking for external validation, then what are our kids picking up? And so we have to be able to walk in our authority in Christ. We have to have this knowing of who we are in Christ. We have, and which means that we have to have this knowing of who God is, which, which is revealed through the word of God. But in order for us to raise strong, healthy children, we're raising men and women. They're children now, but we're raising men and women, right? They're going to be men and women. We have to be able to see ourselves as who we can become and who God has already said that we are in order for us to teach that to our kids. Because how can we teach our kids that they can be anything they want to be? God is not limited. There's no limitations on God, but yet we don't believe that for ourselves. So we have to be able to walk the talk. We have to be able to rest in who are who we are. And, you know, especially in Moms who are raising girls, you have to be able to teach your girls to keep their crown on so they just can't let any old body, any old guy run up and tell them all the things that sound good and sweet and allow them to be deceived and used. We're raising boys who will be men, right? But we need these boys to see women who love themselves. Who love God? Because how are we going to teach our boys, right, to choose the right woman? Or does he even know how to treat a woman if he doesn't know how to respect a woman? Right? This goes, this, this goes so deep. There are so many layers to this. So our keeping our crown on, our keeping our heads up, our resting in Christ, our knowing our identity in Christ and resting in that gives our kids the permission to rest in their identity in Christ. Know who they are in Christ and know what to accept, what not to accept and how to treat others. Like at some point, a cycle of brokenness has to stop. It has to stop. And so we need... To know who we are in Christ. And like this song right now is coming in my head. It's like Christ crucified, right? But Christ didn't say crucified. He rose from the dead with all the power and authority. And if we look at his word, he tells us that we have authority through him. So we have the authority through him. It says, I think in Luke 10, 19, to, to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions and against all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall hurt us. Right? So let's stand in that authority to reject any evil words spoken over us, any evil words spoken over our kids and replace them with the word of God, the truth of God, keeping our crown on because the Bible often says that we have a royal diadem, which is a royal crown on our head. So let's walk in our identity in Christ. Let's walk in the royalty that we are in Christ. Keep our heads up. And don't let the words of anyone or the stigma, the stereotypes of anyone convince us that we are someone that we are not. Because who we are has already been told to us and revealed to us through the word of God. 
And so I just thank you so much for tuning in. I want to encourage you to grab a copy of my book, Navigating the, Inco Navigating the Impossible, A Survival Guide for Single Moms and Pregnancy Through the First Year of Motherhood. It is available on Amazon. So yeah, definitely grab a copy of your book, Navigating the Impossible, A Survival Guide for Single Moms and Pregnancy Through the First Year of Motherhood. Make sure you like this video, love it, share it with a friend, leave a comment to let me know how this has helped you, how this has encouraged you make sure you subscribe and yeah have an amazing day